With a single snap, Thanos wiped out half of life in the universe. After watching Infinity War, a thought popped into my mind. Basically, everyone on Earth had no idea this was going to happen. If you didn't live in New York, or Wakanda, I guess, this would have just been a normal day. And then, suddenly, your friends, family, co-workers just fall apart and float away. Since Endgame exists, we know this wasn't going to be permanent, and that image is less impactful. There's no way half of life in the MCU is going to just stay dead. So I thought, what if this scenario didn't have a happy ending that you'd expect from a 10 year long franchise? What if this happened in the real world, say today even, that Thanos snap actually happened and half of life just vanished without warning permanently? And it'd be this defining apocalyptic moment for any survivors and a mythologized mystery for their descendants. Even though the title implies it, this isn't a video about the Avengers existing or any previous events of the MCU actually happening. This is about the theoretical aftermath if only that snap happened. A hypothetical using only Thanos' defining achievement as a jumping off point. Half of the population on Earth simply turns to dust. The world comes to a halt, literally, in some cases. I can assume there'd be situations on planes where both of the pilots are dusted, sending aircraft tumbling from the skies. Let's just say you wouldn't want to be flying today. Day one really is a time of shock. Nobody knows what even happened. Did people die? Get transported? There wouldn't be any knowledge of what a Thanos is, so globally the main reaction is simply confusion. Emergency lines are immediately flooded, service connections globally are overwhelmed. There is a realization for many that something much worse has happened. Explanations in the first day are abound. The religious would say that the rapture just occurred, perhaps the survivors believing they were not faithful enough. Many prepare for the events of revelations to occur, some attempt to cause it for themselves. Others would think perhaps people were transported somewhere, but can't explain how or why it happened. To the scientific community, there is no rational explanation to any of this. How something of such magnitude, defining the laws of physics, occurred without warning or evidence. Purple man using stones isn't going to be the first thing people theorize or ever theorize. And so there isn't ever a true explanation and there isn't going to be a solution either. There is only the aftermath. The day after day one, the global economy doesn't just crash, it simply doesn't exist anymore. People in key positions, workers, consumers, many simply gone, and it's enough that the market goes into a freefall, one I really doubt it could ever recover from. As the days tick by and people realize that they're not getting their loved ones back, the true reality of what happened sets in. Panic. For now, just how many disappeared is unknown. Nobody actually knows that the snap was a one-time deal. For all anybody knows, their lives might be ending as well. Simple mass panic across the board. Thanos might have just snapped half of life, but the fallout and ramifications from such a thing affect far more. It now becomes a battle over survival, resources, and order. Utter and sheer chaos would encompass much of the world for the first few years. Society in major metropolitan areas simply breaks down. Trade is heavily affected, if not entirely stopped. Production of everything shuts down because every industry is now missing critical people, workers, or lost too many to function. Basic human survival kicks in. Cities become the center of looting, violence, and competition as money is now meaningless. Law and order disappears. As far as anybody knows, this is the apocalypse, and they might be the next to vanish. I could expect there'd be a mass exodus into rural areas, especially as resources, food or water disappear. That's 80% of the US population now trapped in an area that is losing resources by the day. But as masses of people move into rural areas, the true extent of the disaster unfolds. 
Half the crops and livestock are gone too. Yes, Thanos snapped half of life. That means plants and animals. Kevin Feige said that. Now we all know from an outsider's view that half of the population is dead. But I doubt in a real life scenario, people would know this for years. Large scale disaster deaths are only known because the area affected is local. Say a building, city, or even state. And it's tallied from immediate family members reporting the missing, or a simple body count. Since there are no actual bodies and the local area is global, it'd be impossible to have any reliable numbers, and that's when speculation runs wild. Some might think the majority of the world died, some might think very few, but crops and animals are easy to keep track of. If half of every field is turned to dust, news spreads fast that there is now half the food supply. I bring this up because people wouldn't be using the logic that people and resources are now the same ratio. For the survivors, they speculate a ton of people died, but know immediately that food is being taken off the shelves and stores and isn't being put back on. They also hear reports of half the fields being turned to dust and half the livestock too. Imagine if you were in that position. One day, your reliable food supply is now uncertain. This creates an atmosphere of desperation, panic, and violence all around. For some, if they were lucky and got non-perishables, this they can last on for a few months, maybe a year. For most people though, they won't be so lucky. If you stay in the city, you won't have easy access to food. And if you do, you'll be subject to people breaking in and attacking you to get it. Many would probably just decide to leave. Small towns and rural areas are probably in the best position in this new world. They live close to the food production, can defend themselves, and local trade is relatively easy. People from the cities would migrate into rural areas to be close to the only stable food supply. But by such an influx of people coming in, this only creates more violence. Small towns wouldn't have the resources to accommodate for so many, nor would trust or want such an influx of new people. So expect some fighting as these two groups clash over resources. Farmers make up only 2% of the total US population. While the snap is supposed to be indiscriminate and fair, this wouldn't be the case with the small demographics of modern agriculture. If half the farmers, say 1.5 million were killed, that is still a massive critical hit to future food production. On top of half the crops and animals already gone, there's now a brain drain of people who actually know how to raise them. But for people in the US, this affects them the least. And I'll get into that in a little bit. America is at least lucky that it has so much arable land that can be cultivated. Others aren't so lucky. The temporary hit though still leads to suffering and perhaps even famine in areas where trade has completely broken down. Anyone still in the cities would quickly run out of resources. That immediately becomes whatever is left of the government's first priority. Think of the first few weeks after the snap as this confusion phase, especially on a government level. Who in important positions is gone? Who takes their place? If the president and VP are gone, then the house speaker is the new president. If all three vanish, the new leader of the US is the secretary of state or treasury, people that were never voted in. The federal government probably would be able to reorganize itself very quickly bring in new leaders if need be. First order of business is reorganize the military and check who is still left. Whatever is left of the National Guard is called up as well. If everywhere else is just as insane as the US is now, it's very likely the military pulls out a lot of forces and equipment back home. The food crisis in the cities is the new objective for the US. Troops are deployed in areas of the east and west coast, calming the riots and shutting down any violence. This probably would come two weeks to a month after the snap. Now, I actually think this would be very effective. Why? Well, Venezuela. Currently, the country is starving, but the military and leadership is still strong. Why is that? Well, simple. The guys with the guns are the best fed. I could easily see people signing up to join the military simply because it's the quickest way to make sure you and your family are fed. This could be almost a cycle of sorts. The government and military control take more and more resources to feed the military and maintain order. Effectively, the United States becomes a police state. The only way to keep its angry, scared, and hungry population from overthrowing it. The US would certainly survive this. 
America's abundant farmland at least can make the chaos short-lived, compared to everybody else. Geography is fun. That same scenario with chaos in the cities plays out relatively the same everywhere on Earth. Except probably not here. So I'm not going to repeat myself. In most first world nations, it's likely a police state simply arises until a situation can be figured out. But other regions already not in a good situation, the snap basically destroys whatever security their nation had. You know the drill. Riots, violence, but the main death blow to the poorer nations is the breakdown in international trade and of their own crops and animals. We'll call these food insecure nations, ones that rely on imports and don't grow enough resources to sustain their own population. With the global community breaking down, even if half of these populations are snapped, there's still not enough food or resources to feed the survivors in food insecure nations. Global famine strikes in the middle of this chaos. While the rest of the world is focused on assuring their own stability, I could easily see the poorest regions falling into complete starvation. This means potentially deaths in the millions, or tens of millions. Small islands across the globe are in just as bad of a position. Since trade breaks down and they rely on imports to survive, Many island nations across the Pacific suffer from famine and disease as well. I assume there'd probably just be a mass exodus from them onto the mainland. Perhaps in the chaos, old rivalries flare as well. But that's simply my pessimistic side speaking up. I mean, hey, India and Pakistan almost fought a war a few months ago. If the snap happened, they'd definitely be at each other's throats. So the first few years are pretty chaotic and terrible after the snap. At least the worst is behind us. Like I said, Kevin Feige said that the snap wiped out not just humans, but animals and plants as well. Anything that can be considered alive, the snap killed half of that. So half of all plant life is now gone. Earlier, I know I was talking about crops, but that's not the worst news. The worst is the loss of trees. Trees absorb CO2, one of the major greenhouse gases and releases O2 in its place. Especially in tropical regions like the Amazon or Africa, trees are a guard for the planet, keeping it cool like an air conditioner. Even if half of humanity died and industry basically collapsed, this doesn't mean the Earth remains cool or global warming somehow stops. In fact, it actually gets hotter because half of the things absorbing Earth's CO2 are now dead. Meaning the survivors, those that can't afford to import water, now have to deal with additional crop failure. Fun! Not only do people in poor hot regions have to deal with more famine, their future generations have to deal with desertification, environmental collapse, and unbelievably hot conditions. So places like Africa and the Middle East are in a terrible spot. Just like people fleeing from the cities, Expect in a generation or two after the snap, there is a vast migration of what is essentially climate refugees into colder parts of the world, causing even more destabilization and chaos for those nations that were able to land on their feet. Oh, speaking of destabilization... Of the population of Earth's mammals, 60% are livestock. 36% are us. Just 4% of all mammals are wild. Rhinos, elephant, whales, every African beast is a part of just that 4%. Chickens make up 70% of all birds. Because of the expanse of humans, animals that are useful for us have dominated the earth. Those that aren't are pretty much on the brink. Each death of these animals, even today, is a giant blow to their survival and further cements their inevitable extinction. Half of all cows dying is pretty bad for humans, but there will still be far more cows than the rest of every mammal species. If, say, half of the elephants died, or giraffes, this would cause them to go extinct almost instantly. Not to mention, half of Earth's grasslands dry up as well. The survivors would have less mates to reproduce with, less food to survive on, and more desperate, starving humans hunting them for food or ivory. What I'm getting to is, Thanos creates an unintended mass extinction of Earth's already fragile wildlife. I can't predict a percentage of how many would die, but I'd say don't expect the great African fauna or special wildlife you see at the zoo to be around even a decade after the snap.
Thanos really messed everything up, so to say. After rewatching Infinity War while making this, seeing how he truly felt like he was saving the universe by killing half of all life, I couldn't help but think he must be extremely psychotic intending for these ramifications to happen, or he's just an idiot who doesn't realize what exactly getting rid of the plants and animals do to the people he thinks he's saving. Overpopulation and lack of resources is a major problem. I get where his character is coming from, but killing the half to save the other doesn't work if you take away the resources the survivors rely on too. There is no rebuilding. No paradise. No stomachs with full bellies. It'd actually just be the opposite. Like throwing a wrench into the delicate balance that is the 21st century world by killing so many so fast, it shuts down the machine we've gotten so used to. Trade, access to food, mechanized agriculture, safety in society. It would cause the earth to heat up even more, refugees to migrate away from their regions, and animals already on the brink to go extinct. The scenario isn't to rip on the writers or point out the flaws of a movie like some people. A good villain doesn't have to make perfect logical sense. All that matters is that they're convincing and interesting to watch. Thanos is a villain for a reason. This is Cody of Alternate History Hub.